Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit. Today we've got a great version of the front plank that's going to help with degenerative disc disease, facet syndromes, and other problems of the lower back because it's a great version of rotational training for not only the abdominal muscles, but the back muscles. Hope you enjoy it. So this exercise is a great version for those of you who are looking to increase the stability and the strength of your rotational or twisting muscles of your core to stabilize your lower back for degenerative discs, spondylolisthesis, facet syndromes, etc. Many people do not have the strength either in their upper extremity or their core to do rotational planks that really challenge those abdominal oblique and back muscles such as the multifidus that participate in core rotational training. Remember the multifidus in the back is a key muscle that helps when you're training twisting or rotational type movements to stabilize the spine because the abdominal obliques as you're twisting exert a flexion effect or a bending forward effect on the spine. If it's not for the multifidus and other muscles, you're going to have too much flexion as those oblique muscles contract and that's going to put more pressure on those degenerative discs, irritating your condition. So if you don't yet know how to engage your muscles for your particular posture themes and your mechanical issues, I invite you to go to either the Posture Size website or the Pain Free and Fit website. We have a free body analysis there and you can learn if you do have a weak multifidus muscle, how to engage it and use it correctly. If you have a tendency to hip height or raise one hip up while doing abdominal work or leaning a rib cage sideways, a side tilt, or a rotational problem where your hips are going one way and your torso has a tendency to go the other way because your obliques are developed asymmetrically. These are all very, very common issues that people have with abdominal oblique training and we want to keep them in mind as we use this front plank modified form today. So, in a typical front plank, when you are in the position, remember we engage abdominals more by as opposed to just a push-up position, we use a tail under and a crunching rib down towards the pubic bone tension, which elevates the lower back slightly. This helps to really engage the abs as opposed to just being in a straight plank. So tail under and crunch down. You notice I'm doing that very slightly. If I were to use a lot of crunch or bend, such as in a yoga down dog, I'm going to put too much flexion or forward bend on my spine, compressing those degenerative discs and irritating them. So it's just a slight amount that I'm using in this position. So from the front view, I'll show you how to do this exercise now. Once we set up that same front plank where we keep our tail under and crunch down and we have our unique tendencies checked so we make sure we're not leaning to one side or twisting to one side, we're going to bend one elbow slightly. As I do that, my entire body will start to twist towards the straight arm side. And I'm twisting now from my head all the way through my toes. So there's a rotation or a twisting demand on the body causing those abdominal obliques and multifidus muscles to work very strongly to hold me in good alignment. The typical mistake on this side is that on the bent elbow side, besides not being able to hold the twist, many people will either hip hike, raise their hip upwards, or crunch their rib cage down towards this low hip. Let me show you another view of how that looks so you can see that a little bit better on an angle here. Hip up and rib down. That's a mistake because we don't want that side bending effect. We want to keep our structure of our lower back square. That's going to create the easiest amount of symmetrical disc pressure from right to left sides. If we have a habit of either twisting to one side or leaning to one side, that's going to asymmetrically load the disc and irritate our pains. And that's where a lot of people go wrong with doing spinal rehab exercises or core training. They're strengthening their dysfunctions, meaning they're going to their strong side, and that's putting more and more pressure on those discs, and they're not getting better. They're actually aggravating their pains, causing more dysfunction. Remember, we always want to train proper function. We don't want to encourage strengthening dysfunction. So with that plank, make sure that you have your body held in good alignment. You're bending at one elbow, allowing your whole body to twist from the feet all the way up through the shoulders. The other elbow is absolutely straight. As I get stronger in this exercise, I can bend the elbow more and hold eventually 
a 45 degree rotation, which is really demanding on those oblique muscles for stability. And then of course, I'll switch and do it to the other side. You'll see my whole body is turning with that as that elbow bends. Great exercise for those of you who don't have the strength in upper body to stabilize and say a side plank rotational version or core muscles. If you like this video and would like to see more core exercises, healing exercises for degenerative disc and low back problems, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos discussing different topics in core training, healing exercises for your back pain. This one's taken directly from our new Fast Track Healing Program for Degenerative Disc Disease that's available on the Pain Free and Fit website. If you would, would like to help me share this great information with others, leave a thumbs up below. We'll do our best to answer any questions or comments that you have. I hope this exercise helps you with your abdominal oblique training, back muscle training, with your degenerative discs.